gonna give it a 20% chance. Let's find out. We're going to Home Depot. Today's experiment is <laughs> cursed. We are going to attempt to build a complete platinum palladium printing setup for platinum and many all other alternative processes using only what we can find at the Home Depot or whatever your local hardware store is. Uh, I have a theory that grow lights might work. I have a theory that they might have brushes and maybe a way for me to hold the contact sandwich flat. My goal was to make like a really condensed, super tiny printing setup. And I have no idea if this is gonna work, but let's try it because we can. Let's go. Rated for high humidity use, that's good. Okay. My little brother. They're all kind of peak. They start like peaking around 450, and what I want is a peak that's lower than that, and I may not get that. Which way is up? How does English work? I think this is that. I think this is that, and it's the brightest one, and it hurts my eyes the most, which must be part of the answer. So I think that's the, that's, that's the place to start. It's a little smaller than I want, which means we'll have to sit it a little higher above the material than I would necessarily love, but we can also just test it really close for an eight by 10, which is how we're gonna see what our UV output really is like, is we're just gonna schmoosh. So we have a light, which peaks at 623, but has a reasonable peak at 449 and uh, see what we see. I should probably get a cart. As an enclosure for your box, put your light source here, or here, or you locked. I don't really wanna spend $230 on this fucking thing, so we'll use the one that I already have. So, what else do I need? Glass. and a flat material, a flat surface of some variety. Really, the glass is the most important one. Come on, where's your 16 by 20? <laughs> Perfect. Oh yeah, baby, here we go. I could read the words before I try, but it's less fun that way. And this one's broken anyway. I think for the flat surface, I'll just use the lid of my tool chest. What else? Fabric would be nice, but I doubt we're gonna find that here. Close. Okay, so you want uh, a layer of fabric or something between the base plate of your um, exposure unit and the paper, because it gives the glass something to push against. Usually I use just like felt or something, some sort of just random fabric. But if you had to, uh, a cheapy carpet that's like just the thinnest mat that money can buy would work. As long as it doesn't have a weird texture, it would need to be just flat. A little thick, but it would probably work if it had to. I'm gonna skip that step today because I already have fabric, but if you didn't have some and you had to buy it at Home Depot, some sort of cheapy mat would probably work. Brushes. No, it's because it's got that angle to it. You don't want the angle, you want a flat brush. You know, just roll it on, don't worry about it. Just throw your money away, who needs it? A big, thick brush, That's that would be terrible. Horrible, no good, very bad. We'll get that sheet of um, plywood. We'll get the nice one, because it's flatter, and then I won't need so much fabric. And then I think we're set.
Okay, so right now I'm looking for the base of where I'm gonna lay the print and the negative and then smoosh it flat with probably a sheet of glass. I need something that's like reasonably flat and is at least the size of the print area. I think that's everything we need. Need, need. You could do more, but this is proof of concept. Let's see what we see. $205.49 later, we've got at least a start to this thing. It might work. I give it a 20% chance. Let's find out. You're doing great, Moose. Okay, so I can already tell <laughs> suffering will be ensued. This brush, no matter how much water I feed it, will not form a, a smooth surface, which is what you want when you're coating. Like my nice brushes, where they have this beautifully even, smooth, clean surface. The two differences are drastic. Uh, but we're gonna go ahead and do it anyway, because Home Depot. So this is my setup. Uh, it's nothing particularly fancy. I am calibrated for five minutes on the bulbs that I usually use. I have no idea how long this exposure will take. So we're gonna start with five minutes and then we'll take a peek and see what we see. It might be great, it might be terrible. My bed is on terrible. <laughs> Well, it looks awesome, actually. Our $200 setup uh, using a negative that I'd already printed, just had laying around, looks insanely good. Instead of my five minute exposure, we went all the way to 10 minutes, and I judged that based on how much printout I was seeing in the margins, so I over-coated and then just watched the areas that would eventually turn black. Um, but like, it's nice and snappy, high contrast. I actually pushed this one. I mean, the 10 minute exposure means that this print is darker than its fellow. But there was definitely enough UV on this system with the bulbs that close to make an 8x10 print for $200, full stop. The only thing that I didn't add uh, to my shopping cart at Home Depot that I could have, which we already own, are these Honest to God Home Depot brand a clamps, which I use to apply pressure. Uh, let's go take this into some better light. Uh, I would just use another one of these trays for another $9.87 or however much they cost. Uh, but I have another tray with chem chemistry already set up. So we'll just go stick this in that. I think that's much darker than its brother. So I probably could have left it at five minutes. Even with, I mean, maybe could have left it at five minutes. That's pretty impressive. The only other limitation right now is that with the bulbs this close and the way that I'm currently suspending it off the glass, which is to say like random pieces of packing material, I'm limited to basically an eight by 10 print. So if I wanted to make this full size print, which is actually another few inches on either side, 
I would have to figure out a way to actually suspend it, which is not particularly difficult to do. And actually makes me really want to do it. if that makes a difference. Okay, so it works and it looks pretty good. You can tell where the light started falling off on the outside edges of the print because this print is very close to the same actual size as the surface area of our light. So uh, in order to do this, you're really, with this particular light source, kind of stuck with an eight by 10 print size. But it's also like the cheapest and easiest way to get yourself to an eight by 10 print size. Uh, it's a lot better than I thought it was going to be. At a seven minute exposure, it looks at least half decent. So I would happily recommend the Home Depot do-it-yourself method for as cheap as possible. For those of you whose primary concern is like, oh man, can I afford this? Like, yeah, for a couple hundred bucks in chemistry, which you have to buy separately, and a couple hundred bucks in just stuff you can buy at Home Depot, send it and make prints and see how it goes for you. And then when you're ready, scale it up. Instead of one light source, do two or three or four and plug them all into the same switched power strip and just use that as your on off switch. Like there's no reason not to. I'm dumbfounded by this and the fact that it worked. Astonished. Not perfect, but pretty good. Thank <laughs> you.